We've never done it before, but we're ending this episode of Wild Side with an obituary. He was in the presence of two United States presidents. He watched a major battle take place right in front of him where thousands were killed. He saw Native Americans go by on hunting trips, and he lived his final days on a golf course at the Richland Country Club. Trees are the great memoirs of time. Trees, if they could speak, no history and no mankind. It's more than just the trees themselves, it's the stories that they tell about our history and our past. Every member here knows that we lost a great friend when we had to cut down our 400-year-old burr oak, one of the witness trees in the state of Tennessee, a witness tree because it witnessed great historical events. We did everything we could to keep that tree alive. We did annual pruning, lightning protection, fertilization, uh, antibiotics, believe it or not, to keep fungus from growing. But the tree lived its full, actually it lived past its lifespan. For safety reasons, it needed to come down. No tree lives forever, but they do live a long time. And to me, it's remarkable that we have some trees identified that are old enough that they were living witnesses to some of the stories and historical events that we read about in our books. 400 years of history in Nashville is incredible. This tree saw the buffalo lining up one by one, walking uh, down Granny White Pike to the Great French Lick, where the National Sound Stadium is today. It saw the Choctaw and Cherokee camping under it during when this was a great hunting ground. It saw the development of Granny White Pike in the 1840s. It saw Lucy White, for which the pike is named, and her uh, wagon and horses going up this road. It probably was seen by Andrew Jackson. It was probably seen by James K. Polk and it was seen by numerous Confederate and United States cavalrymen that fought here on December 16, 1864. Quite a battle. Maybe the largest dismounted cavalry operation uh, during the entire Civil War, the Battle of Nashville, was a decisive United States victory, and now it's seen a great Jack Nicklaus signature golf course. Richland celebrates the Civil War battle by having as T markers Sharps carbine bullets. Bullet was uh, shot by in guns by both uh, the United States and Confederate cavalry. The Sharps carbine was a very famous rifle of that time. 1988, we found the only handwritten map from this battle where a young man who it was 18 in 1864 and fought here was a lawyer in Memphis. He got a horse and came, was in Nashville on business and came out here in 1904 and drew a map of the property. And from that map, we came to the property with the metal detectors and found the United States Cavalry Camp, or part of it, right here where we're filming. James Harrison Wilson, I think he was 28 or 29 years old at the time of this battle, West Point graduate, I believe 1860. He was the United States Cavalry commander of the troops that were on this property. Wilson spent the night at the Tucker Farmhouse just across the street from uh, our country club here. And with him was uh, the rebel Colonel uh, Ed Rucker, who was captured. General George Thomas came down Granny White Pike just to our left and shouted out to Wilson, dang it to hell, Wilson, I told you we could lick them. And after the war, the Tennessee legislature printed some fine medals for the Corps commanders of the United States Army. And we have in our club the medal and the personal letter from George Thomas to Wilson congratulating him on his victory here at Nashville. We gathered over 250 acorns. We found that about 100 of them uh, would produce. We planted 
75 of those all sprouted successfully. Uh, squirrels got a few of them and we were able to actually grow about 15 of them and we have four or five uh, that are extremely healthy right now that are going to be replanted here at the club. It keeps telling the story and will continue to tell it for another 500 or 1,000 years, you know, if the people take care of the babies that we have growing now. Some of our trees uh, represent significant historical occasions, the Civil War, civil rights, famous people, presidents, uh, but they also represent some of the people that are lesser known. It helps us better connect to the world around us. And I think in some ways in broadening our perspective of the foundation of our nation, our state, our community, and even our neighborhood, it makes us better people and better citizens to maybe in our own way to make history for the future. Thank you for joining us. We hope you are inspired to appreciate and protect our natural resources. And if you have to choose sides, always choose the wild side. Tennessee's Wild Side has been a presentation of the Jackson Foundation, educating viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure with support from the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, promoting wise uses of Tennessee's agricultural and forest resources to develop economic opportunities and ensure safe and dependable food, fuel, and fiber for all citizens. And from Tennessee State Parks, where you can camp by the riverside, retreat to the mountains, and escape the busyness of life. From Memphis to Kingsport, you'll find the perfect adventure in Tennessee State Parks. Wildside is produced in association with Rockwater TV.